Are we moving into a time where we no longer need those giant surge protectors, those really big power strips where we always had difficulty figuring out where they were gonna go because they do take up so much space? That's where something like this is gonna come in handy, where we actually have a receptacle that can provide the surge protection. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how this is installed. It's super easy. And once it's installed, I'll also go over the features of it and how it works. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so up on this mock-up wall, this is gonna be the receptacle that I'm going to be replacing. Now, even though it's a mock-up wall, I do have electricity flowing to it. So I am going to simulate this as though it is real. So while there is electricity going to this now, before we do anything with electrical, we want to turn off the circuit breaker that supplies the power to whatever it is that we're working on. In this case, this receptacles. Now that circuit breaker is off, now I'm going to use my outlet tester just to confirm that power is in fact off and we don't have any lights lighting up. Just to be sure, we'll check the bottom one and no lights lighting up there either. So the power is in fact off. So now I can remove the cover plate and just as an added safety measure, I'll use my voltage detector just to make sure that the power is in fact off. Now that I've confirmed that the power is in fact off, now I can remove the receptacle from the box. Then after I've removed it from the box, then I can remove all of the wires from the receptacle. And it's always best practice when removing them to start with the hot wires, then remove the neutrals, and then finally the ground. All right, so now with this new receptacle, if I flip this over here to the back, it very much is like a GFCI in that it's going to tell me exactly where each wire goes. And in this case, I'm gonna to need to know which black and white wire are my line wires, which are the wires that are bringing the power in from either the receptacle up line or from the circuit breaker itself. Whatever's feeding this, that will be the line. And then I also need to know what is the load, which then are the other set of wires, which are then what are taking the power on from this receptacle onto the other outlets on down the line. So so in order to do that, the first thing I always like to do is separate my wires apart. That way I know which hot and neutral is coming from each set of wires. So this black wire and this wire are coming from the same cable. And then these two are together down here at the bottom. And then the other reason why I like to have them separated is in order to find the line in the load, I'm gonna have to turn the circuit breaker back on. So of course I don't want my wires anywhere near each other and causing a possible issue. So now they're all separated out. So now I can turn the circuit breaker back on. All right, so now the circuit breaker is back on. So one of these pairs is now hot and now I just need to figure out which one it is. So I'm gonna take my voltage detector here. I've got it on already. I'm gonna take one of my probes touch it to the ground wire here, take the other probe and touch it to this bottom black wire here. And it's not lighting up, so I don't have any voltage there. So this is not the hot. So it's probably this one up here. So if I leave this probe attached to the ground and then touch this other probe to this top wire, as you can see, the voltage detector is now showing 120 volts. So now we know that this top wire up here is the line wire, and then these down here would be the load. So now I can go ahead, turn the circuit breaker back off. Now that the circuit breaker is back off, now I need to retest my wires just to make sure that there is in fact no voltage here and the power is dead, which it is. All right, so the first wire that I'm gonna install on my surge protector receptacle is going to be the ground. As you can see, I've got two blacks, two whites, and one ground. And that is gonna be the case in almost every situation because on most receptacles that you're gonna remove or install, there's only gonna be one spot on the receptacle for a wire to go. You can't double stack them if you were to have two or even three, whatever it may be, you have to only have one ground. And the way that that's done is you have your two grounds for your line and your load, and then you have a ground pigtail that is then going to the receptacle. And of course, this is an ideal lever connector. So I'm just gonna push that into the back of the box and out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna start with my ground. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that ground wire, take that loop, put it around this ground screw on the bottom of the new receptacle. Once that's wrapped around that ground screw in a clockwise direction, then I will tighten it down. All right, so on this particular receptacle, the ground is the only one where I'm gonna need hooks in order to connect it to this device. Now you can either side wire them, which then would require to put those J hooks on it like the ground wire has, but I much prefer these holes here in the back. These are not backstab holes. These are back wiring holes. The big difference is with backstab, you just push it in and it holds it in place. A very thin piece of metal holds it in place. Those are not any good, but this is back wiring where when you put the wire into one of these holes, when you tighten this screw down, a piece of metal is going to start sandwiching up towards another piece of metal and it's going to sandwich the wire in between those two pieces of metal making a very good connection and also holding the wire in there pretty much exactly like a vise. So if you ever have the back wiring option I highly recommend using it and you're going to find them more so on your commercial grade receptacles like you saw me remove. 
All right, so first I'm gonna connect my neutrals. Now remember, these two down here at the bottom are the load, and we found that these two up here at the top, these are the line. And on this receptacle, it specifically says where each wire goes. Our whites go over here on this side where the silver colored screws are, and then it says hot. The hot wires, which are the black wires in this case, go over here where these brass colored terminal screws are. So we're gonna start with the neutrals. Those are gonna go to silver. And again, the bottom are the loads. So I'm gonna take this white neutral wire that is my load wire, and it's gonna go right up here where it says white wire on this side and then load up here on these top terminals. So all I need to do is take that neutral wire coming from my loads, put it up in one of those holes there. Then once that's seated, I'll just tighten down the terminal screw, which will then hold that wire in place. All right, so now I just have this one white neutral wire left, and that's again gonna go on the same side as this white wire, but it's gonna go down here where it says line. So all I have to do is push that into one of those holes, and then once that's seated, I can then tighten down that terminal screw and it'll hold that one in place. All right, so now all my neutrals are connected. So now I'm gonna go on to my black wires. This one down here at the bottom is load. So it's gonna go over here on this side where it says hot wire and the brass colored terminal screws are. And it's gonna go up here in this one where it says load. So again, I'll just insert that in. And once that's seated, I'll just tighten it down. And then last but not least, I've got my last black wire here. This is my line wire. And it's gonna go down here at the bottom where it says line. And then once that's in place, I can just tighten that screw down. All right, so now all of my wires are connected. So now I can push the receptacle into the box and then I can use the provided screws to tighten it down. And then after it's tightened down, then I can install the trim plate. Now that's all installed. Now I can turn the circuit breaker back on that supplies the power to this receptacle. Now that the power is back on going to this receptacle, now I can take my receptacle tester and test to make sure that everything is wired up properly and that we have power here. And these two lights over here to the right lit up, which tells us that everything is wired up properly and we do have power. But now let's check the top one. And as you can see, both of the lights are also lit up on top. So we know that everything is in fact wired up properly and we have power going to this. Now, one really nice feature aside from the surge protection that this receptacle has to offer is this green light over here. This is also telling us that everything is wired up, that this has power going to it and the surge protection that is being supplied by this receptacle and everything is being protected that is plugged into this receptacle. If at some point down the road, we see that this green light is no longer there on some devices, it'll be red and on others it will just disappear completely but whatever the case if that green light does disappear this device is letting us know that it has absorbed a surge or numerous surges which is more likely to be the case with all the internal surges it's not just external but internal as well but that green light not being illuminated anymore is letting us know that things are no longer being protected the surge protector has done its job and it unfortunately needs to be replaced at this point but the good thing is it was able to save whatever was plugged into it so it's definitely a very useful receptacle and I have quite a few places in mind where I'll be installing this in my own home. So to answer the question that was posed at the beginning, can this surge protection device replace those larger, super bulky surge protectors that we've all been having to deal with for so long? And the answer is yes and no. While these definitely can offer a lot of protection for a lot of different sensitive items in the house, one area that really stands out, for instance, to me is wall-mounted TVs. Now, even though you have these lower profile surge protectors, these oftentimes can still get in the way. They oftentimes will not allow the TV to completely tilt all the way down, and that's without anything being plugged into them but once you start plugging things into them it extends out even further on top of that while this is a 15 amp receptacle they also have a 20 amp receptacle and a place in my house where that would come in super handy is in behind the cabinet oven and microwave combo i've actually in the past had an instance where i had a surge it burned out some of the circuit boards in that microwave and oven combo and the outlet is in behind that unit if I would have had a 20 amp version of this installed in behind that oven and microwave, there's a very good chance that I would not have had that issue. So again, there are so many applications where these can be installed. It just depends on your particular situation, where you're wanting surge protection at, and where you don't wanna have one of those giant surge protectors or even one of these that are sticking out. You just want it to look like a regular receptacle or you've got a tight space and you just want it to sit flat with the wall. Now, I also wouldn't have had that issue with my microwave and oven combo if I would have had a whole house surge protector on my house at the time. I now do and have had one installed ever since then to help protect all of my other sensitive electronics like my TVs, computers. So not only is having a whole home surge protector installed very advantageous in addition to having these inside of your home for internal surges, but whole home surge protectors are actually now required per the 2023 version of the National Electric Code. So if you'd like to learn more about those new requirements, how it's installed, and
and what all a whole home surge protector does, then you can click on this video right over here where I go into depth on all of that and show you exactly what I installed. Once you click on this picture, it will take you directly to it. So I hope you found value in this video and you found it to be interesting. And if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.